fair to say that we try to have a bit of fun on House of Rugby, but every so often you come to a place where you just kind of have to stop. And we're in Hiroshima. It's actually the afternoon of England against Australia, but my word, this place puts a whole different perspective on everything that we've been talking about over the last few months. James and Mike are alongside. And our lovely guide, Ri. And you've been born and brought up in Hiroshima. I know you yes. went to Tokyo for four years, but now you are a guide here as yes, well. Yes, I'm doing um, And your parents survived the yes. bomb in yes. August 1945. Just yes, tell us a little bit about Hiroshima yes. through the eyes of your family. Yeah, and in 1945, August 6, in the morning, 8.15, a single atomic bomb was dropped here. And uh, a lot of people died. So about 140,000 people died by the end of the year. And uh, my parents, the, my mother was 16 years old, and uh, she was very far away from here. But next day she came because she was looking for her little brother. He was 12 years old, and he was breaking houses to make spaces between houses to uh, prevent from fire from spreading. But uh, she was exposed to radiation yeah. because next day she came. Right. So they didn't, they didn't realize that after the bomb, when you came, that they were still going to get ill and still have problems? They don't know at okay. all. They don't know at all. And my father was 20 years old. Right. And she was, he was at a station, so three kilometers from hypocenter, and he was working there. Yes. And uh, he lost his consciousness and right. because of the blast. And then he noticed his colleague was standing near a window. He was dead. Right. And uh, already fire spread, and it was very difficult to come out from the building. But he somehow went out and went to the top of the mountain. And he was there until fire settled down. Will you tell us a little bit about the dome behind mm -hmm. us? And yeah. how difficult a decision it was, I suppose, to turn it into a memorial as opposed to, to get rid of it and, and almost to forget yeah. about it? Yeah. yeah, because a lot of people said it should be destroyed because it evoked painful memory and also looked very dangerous. Yeah. But uh, other people said it should be preserved to say no more Hiroshima. And it was determined to be preserved in uh, 1966. And then it was designated as the World Heritage Site in 1996. So obviously, you see the pictures of pure devastation. Yeah. Then how, when did the rebuilding process start to turn it into the city that it is now yeah. is today? It took a long time, but it's interesting thing is in the beginning, they just worked so hard to uh, restore the like a water supply and electricity and the gas. So it just uh, very in the beginning, it was restored. But uh, other buildings, I think it took about uh, 10 years. So because this uh, Peace Memorial Park was built uh, 1955. So those days, yes, gradually. Can I ask you a little bit about your parents' memories? Mm -hmm of that time and of the day? Yeah. I mean, did they ever talk to you about it and, and what the experience yeah. was like? My mom didn't talk about it for a long time because she was very worried about us because uh, survivors were discriminated. But uh, I became a guide, so I asked a lot about yes. it. And then she said, at that time, she uh, came here and she checked bodies to look for her little brother. And uh, it was sometimes difficult to uh, distinguish if they were females or males because they were heavily burnt. And sometimes she had crossed river and because a lot of the, the bridges fall, fell. So she crossed river by boat and uh, it was like uh, flooded with corpses. Because it's interesting actually with the world the, way, the world the way it is at the moment with mm. America, how it is, with China, how it is, with everyone's arguing with everyone else. This, kind of becomes more relevant than ever yeah. a place like this because this is the extreme reminder. this is the extreme version you know only twice in history were they ever used in in, mm. in a war and and we threaten it all the time so it's kind of almost more important now that places yeah. like this that they keep that I think yes. just thinking about it you know because everyone's very flippant about stuff and then you come and see here and we saw the before and after photos of, of you know Hiroshima beautiful place the next mm. time everything's gone apart from here mm. the building over there a bridge yeah. It was, it's crazy. You've obviously been to, you've well, had six months living in Japan, yeah. haven't you? Did you come down here as a player? No, I, I didn't. And obviously, you know, I studied history. I was going to go to university and, and, and read history. Um, so I was obviously all aware, been very much aware of it, but didn't know, quite know the details. And I've kind of been to, I've been to Auschwitz in, in, in Poland, you know, to come to places like here. There's lots of locations around the world that kind of show the best and worst of, of humanity. And I think, you know, I was when I went to Germany. I was oh Poland. I was like blown away by 
such evil, like I never, I couldn't comprehend it. And to come here again and actually, you know, I think what you were saying, younger generations, when they're removed from it, it's just a story in a book or it's just a, a monument. But then when you see the images of it and you see what happened and you hear the stories, it's so hard to, to relate, but we, you know, because we are so exposed to things now on, on WhatsApp groups, because we see horrific stuff all the time, it does, it, you kind of do understand that what, how fragile human life is and what happened here and how terrible it is and how every day you just pick up the news and there's some country fighting with some other country threatening this. And I think this should be like a, a, a mark in the sand to go, do you know what, we went there and it really was terrible because, you know, the, you know we were talking about it earlier, that the bombs they've got now are sort of 3,800 times more powerful than what was dropped here. And it's just, it's horrific. So I think it's really important, it's very moving to, to, to see that and to understand and to hear the stories. And I think when you sit there and talk to someone like yourself or see the videos and hear about parents talking about children, finding them with their skin hanging off and burnt and then, you know, thinking that you dealt with this and then everybody's getting cancer and getting illness or radiation or this key, uh, keloid scarring and all this kind of stuff they're getting and it never stops and then people didn't want to be associated with them. It's, it's kind of quite shocking and makes you think. So when the young kid came around and was like, do you want to sign up to anti-nuclear stuff? I was like, yeah. yeah, I think that's what I signed up for that or something else. It could have been anything, but they did assure me that was it. I didn't have to put my bank details in. So. It's amazing there are still sort of clipboards and, and yeah. questionnaires and that kind of thing. We are very lucky and, and we're all happy to acknowledge that, but it is extraordinary being here, how you can just feel the history. I, I, I didn't know a huge amount about it, but you cannot escape the history of this place. No, and I don't think you should do. I think, uh, as James said, it's a marker and a reminder. Uh, it also shows uh, uh, the resilience of people that you now have a thriving city around it and uh, and shows that people have always got to move on, but you've always got to look to those paths and, the, and um, just the hideous nature of what what happened. You know, the, the plane that just comes over, everyone's having a normal day and then what was it, 43 seconds they reckon the bomb dropped for from when it was off the plane to then suddenly another 45 seconds later the, the whole landscape has completely been changed for forever and people's lives have changed forever and it just shows the, the horrible, how horrible war can be and, and it, is, it is always, you just can't imagine, you, always, you can read about it but then being there sort of imprints on you more because you think what you would feel like if you were, if you were there or you knew that your kid was at school there. Obviously, there's a lot of there's a memorial to all the children that were massively affected, and, and most of them who were killed. And you just think if you were working somewhere as a parent, and you knew that your kid was at school there, and you have to go and wade through a river of bodies to try and find them, hoping that you'll find them. It's just you know something that you hope you'll never have to experience, and you you, you just can't. You'll ne never can sort of put yourself in the situation of what you would feel. Yeah. I mean, it's just a it's sort of a sensory overload, isn't it? It's almost unfathomable, really. All right, well, it is obviously an amazing way to put a perspective on everything um, that we're doing out here in Japan. But obviously, England, Australia taking place in a few moments' time, so Mike's actually shot off to uh, go and do a quick interview. Are you happy to take us over and to tell us a little bit about the... Is it called Peace. the Bell of Peace? Is okay, that what, okay. Yeah, can we Peace do that? Bell? We'll walk and talk yeah, as we yeah. go. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about how Hiroshima likes to remember the events here. Is it, is it, it's very, very prevalent that there is a lot of history around and that there's mm -hmm. a, you know, there are monuments and a lot of respect to be mm -hmm. shown. Yeah. Is and, that right? Uh, yes. And uh, here is everything is here and to show and uh, all monuments tell the stories. Yes. Yeah. Um, In terms of, I suppose, the future for Hiroshima. Yes. D does it feel like the pain is has sort of disappeared a little bit or does is it a scar that the the city will always carry oh uh, actually survivors you know have died a lot and uh, we don't have many survivors now and uh, actually i don't think we have a lot of scars now and uh, because of uh, i think the hiroshima people are very strong and uh, so we have built up the city again yeah. and uh, i don't think I, mm, I don't think we have really big scars in us. And, uh, but uh, still, you know, maybe I think we have more kind of things to have a kind of mission that to yes. talk about that. So it's a bit different. Yeah. You, you said a very interesting thing earlier about the fact that your mother didn't talk about it because yeah. she felt that they were ostracized and that they were distanced. As people began to realize and to learn 
the actual impact of the radiation. Mm. Are the survivors today, are they respected and revered for the way that they have uh, they've survived yes, the story? Yes, and the survivors the started to talk a little bit because right. they were also traumatic, so they didn't want to talk. But uh, they started to talk and they think it's very important to spread stories. And also children are learning. So uh, now uh, new people are, uh, you know, succeeding the story. So they are listening to the story and also they start speaking. Yes. So that's their story. Do, so, do, you, do you find that um, very often the younger generations in, in, in a lot of countries, mm. they, they learn about things that happen and yeah. they become either very angry, they become very like impassioned about it. They kind of take on people's fights. You know, if you, when, when a lot oh. of kids go to university, you know, they start studying Marxism and communism and all this kind of stuff. They, they kind of get very impassioned about it. Do you find that the young, younger generation in Japan are angry about what happened here? Do they, do they, do they resent you know, what, what happened? Do, they, do you find that they don't like the Americans or is it not that case? Because I, I just think it's a very interesting thing to see what the feeling is of the yeah. younger people around here. It's very interesting. I have never met somebody who are very angry about okay. what happened here. But uh, I have met a lot of the students who want to learn and who want to talk about the story and uh, to talk about the peace. Okay. It's more important for them, I think. Fine, OK, yeah. OK. So, Ree, we've obviously come to the other side now, and we've got an amazing contrast between what the beautiful building, the Prefectural Industrial Promotional Hall, was like. It, it's a very awkward question to ask, partic particularly given where we are, but mm -hmm. how does the city cope with 140,000 people who've, who've lost their life? And I suppose the, the, the physical effects of some of these injuries, I mean, is it possible to describe the horror that unfolded off the back of the, the bomb? Yeah, the, most of the people, the skins were peeled and it became like hanging down from their body. So they were moving like zombies because it was very hot, painful for yeah. them to, you know, lower their, and also their blood comes down. So it was very difficult for them. So they were like that and zombies, they were walking. Wow. And uh, also the many people were just burnt and uh, heavily burned and died instantly. But uh, a lot of the, some people survived and it was more painful because the, some people vomited the, their intestines. And uh, also the, they lost hair yeah. so because of radiation. And uh, also the, most people kind of, the, they went into water yes. and uh, people couldn't give them water because it was the kind of, the rumor spread that they shouldn't give water because they would die. But uh, so they were very thirsty and uh, they drank water and also black rain. Wow. And the uh, black rain contained a lot of, you know, the radiation. So yes. they also drugged and uh, internally, you know, the exposed to. What did they do with, with so obviously, uh, we talked earlier about the, the the bodies in the river and mm. the bodies bodies piled up. Yeah. What does a uh, people bury everything? Was it was it weeks before people could get rid of all the bodies? Was it was it? It they try so uh, because we have a mound here and because these areas are strewn with corpses, so they as soon as possible they uh, cremated oh, and okay. uh, buried Amazing. here. But now uh, because uh, war finished. And uh, so August 15th, so army was dissolved. So until then, the army was helping, but uh, nobody could do afterwards anymore. Yes. So uh, for a long time, the body was in river and they were fend the tide difference. So they go to the sea and when tide changes, they come back to river. Oh, so wow. they were floating in river for a long time. Uh, am I right in saying the war finished nine days later? Uh, yes. Can you just six, tell us about that, yes. that process? That, that, uh, yeah, because uh, August 6th, the atomic bomb was dropped here, and three days later, in, on Nagasaki, another bomb was dropped. Yes. And then, the, afterwards, Japan decided, and the emperor said, the Finnish, uh, it is uh, over, the okay. war is over. And uh, August 6th, 15th, there was everything over. Tell us a little bit about yeah. This is the bell of peace. Yes. And it's just symbolic because why? Yeah, because this is shape, doomed shape. Yes. Represents universe. Okay? Gotcha. And this bell has a world map without borders. Yes. So means we want the world in one. Yes. One world in the future. But is there any problems with health 
health stuff now since mm. since the bomb is there more is there more cancer in in, in Hiroshima than any time or is there yeah, more like uh, my is it I'm, I'm, I don't I don't know but uh, my father became a stomach cancer after really? 30 years and uh, I thought it wasn't related to because 30 years later but after I became a guide I studied a lot and I noticed uh, a lot of survivors became a stomach cancer after 30 years really so that kind of thing happened later. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, my mom had a, a breast cancer and a thyroid cancer and a liver cancer and a bone cancers. But uh, still, we don't know it was related to or not. They were. Yes. But a lot of people became. And, and, and it's, but now, in terms of when they build, there's no problems with radiation in Hiroshima? No, no, no. Because uh, these are very different. So because the high temperature, it was like 3,000 to 4,000 degrees Celsius. Right. So 90% of radiation went up to air and oh, spread to the world. Okay. And only 10% fell on the ground. Wow. And this decreased the one week. And the one month later, we had a big typhoon. And uh, that typhoon washed everything, but including people who were living on streets. Wow. because they lost their houses. But also radiation were washed away. So current level of radiation is just the same as other places. Well, oh, wow. Really? Mm. Um, just, can I ask you about your parents as mm. well? Um, did they, you, you were talking about the fact that the, the cancers and, uh, and obviously the, the suffering that they went through. Did they internalize that? You said your mother didn't talk about it very well. How did she cope? With, yeah. with what she'd been through. Actually, she was a very happy person. Really? And she had never grudged on anybody. Amazing. And so, yes, I loved her so much. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she was, she was just, uh, just uh, accepted what happened to her. That is yeah. remarkable. Yeah. That, and it was very much the way that the people coped with it, was just yeah. to move on. Yeah, move on is, I think, the world for survivors here. That's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Should I ring the bell? Yes, Would you like please, to ring the bell, James? The bell. <laughs> House of Rugby <laughs> reiterating <laughs> world peace not, here in Hiroshima. Ring the bell. Well, I don't know if I'm going to have the skill set to be able to do this, but we'll see. I assume we just... One take. <laughs> I'd go so far as to say that's the loudest dong we've heard in uh, that, that was in quite about a two big hours. Bell ring, wasn't it? Are but you happy, Ree, that we've done it correctly? Yes. Yes. <laughs> House of Rugby. Didn't break for it. For world peace. No, no problem at all. Amazing. Nice. Just tell us once again about the the, the, yeah. sim, the symbolism of this yeah. bell. So we've this, got the we've got the globe on it, the world on it. Yes, this is a world map without any borders. You can see. So this is our dream that someday the world will become one, no worlds at all. And here, this is Mila. This reflects people who come here and they're asking you what future you would like to have. And the opposite side, please look at. This is a nuclear mark where Hamas strikes a bell. Oh, and wow. this is our dream that we would like to demolish all nuclear weapons by striking the bell. So this is one of your wish that- I have done it, yeah. Yes, thank you. Amazing. Just, it's, it's such a historical place. It's an extraordinary... There are certain places you go to in life where you can feel what has been before. Mm. And this is, you mentioned Auschwitz. I went to Bergen-Belsen, even somewhere like Dealey Plaza. You know the history of the place as soon as you arrive there. Mm. And it's, um, it's been an absolute education. Thank mm. you very much indeed, Marie, oh, for your time. Thank you for coming to Thank Hiroshima. You. Thank you for visiting yeah. here. Thank you very yes. much. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. <laughs> You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.